like to talk. I'm not a very verbally gregarious guy, so I'll try to keep the talk on the short end of 20 minutes and the discussion on the longer end of 20 minutes. Um, it's going to be about wisdom, and it's going to have like these parts, I guess. Um, why we care about what wisdom is, um, and um, some theories about what wisdom is, and uh, an argument that uh, an argument that there are two kinds of wisdom. So first of all, why would you care about wisdom? About what it is? in particular, and there's a bunch of uh, reasons you might care about what wisdom is. The most obvious one is it seems like a good thing to have. Uh, well, like, for one thing, it's sort of the opposite of foolishness or the absence of foolishness. And nobody wants to be foolish. It's, it's better to be not foolish than foolish, so that's to say it's good to be wise. Um, that's one reason you might care uh, about what it is to the extent that it's a good thing to have you should probably have some interest in what it is in the first place. There's um, another reason you might care, especially if you were already into this thing, philosophy. Um, and that reason is that, well, etymolog etymologically speaking, the word philosophy comes from these two Greek words, um, philo and sophia, and philo refers to love, or maybe kind of love, and sophia refers to wisdom, so the word philosophy etymologically anyway, it seems to mean uh, something like love of wisdom. So if you cared about philosophy in the first place, you might be interested in that fact. I mean, wonder what wisdom is. What's this thing that philosophers supposedly love? So those are some reasons you might care about what wisdom is, and, well, I guess now here are some theories about what it is. So there's this story. Um, many of you may be familiar with it. Um, it occurs in a dialogue called the Apology by this guy, Plato, and here's what happens in that dialogue. There's this oracle that tells this guy, Socrates, you're the wisest of all the people. And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm just some regular guy. What do you mean I'm the wisest of all people? And then, puzzled by this, he goes and starts to folk. Start, goes and starts talking to folks. Um, carpenters, judges, politicians. Uh, and he asks these folks... Uh, who supposedly would be wise, wise at carpentry, or wise because they know how to make decisions in court, or somehow they have the wisdom to be politicians and rule a country. He keeps asking these people um, for the content of their wisdom. He keeps asking the judges, uh, what, is, what is justice, this thing that you're applying? He keeps asking the politicians, uh, what sorts of ways should you rule the state? Um, and so on and so forth. And well, I guess the same thing happened to him as would happen to us today if we tried to do that. <laughs> you ask these people questions, for example, judges about what justice is, and pretty soon you realize that they have no idea what they're talking about. It's not very hard to get a judge or a politician to the point where you realize that they're just making stuff up. They don't know what's going on. And Socrates sort of realizes, aha, all these people think they're wise, but they're not. Well, at least with me, at least with me, I don't think I am. They're all uh, unwise, but think they are. I, I, I'm unwise, but at least I don't think I am wise. Well, that's something. Maybe that's what the oracle is talking about. and Maybe that's why I'm the wisest of all people. Um, well, that, might, that story might suggest to you a certain theory of what wisdom is. Um, you might think that um, wisdom is something like you might think that wisdom is... Sorry, I'm going to have to get an eraser over here. Now I'm back in the movie. Um, you might think that wisdom is having, uh, having accurate beliefs about what uh, you do and don't know. The judge thinks he knows what justice is. But he doesn't. He has inaccurate beliefs about whether he knows what justice is. The politician thinks he knows um, what the best state looks like, but he doesn't know that. He has an inaccurate belief about whether he knows what the best state looks like. Socrates, however, has accurate beliefs about what he does and doesn't know. 
accurately, he believes that he doesn't know. And supposedly that's what makes him the wisest of all people. So sort of generalizing on that story, you might think, well, that's just what wisdom is. It's having these accurate beliefs. Um, I don't really like it. Um, here's one problem with this theory of wisdom as having accurate beliefs about what you do and don't know. Um, one problem is um, it uh, makes um, it makes certain um, small children wise. So suppose you have like a small child, a child that's like just just barely gotten to the point where they can more or less speak English. Um, they may not think they know anything. They may always say, uh, Daddy, I don't know what time it is. Uh, Daddy, what's a dentist? Daddy, what's justice? For everything, they don't take themselves to know it. They might be like that. But um, that shouldn't automatically make them wise. We don't think of little kids uh, who just picked up languages particularly wise. Um, so that's one reason to not really like this view. Um, that might suggest a different sort of view. Um, a totally differently motivated sort of view. Um, before I say what that other view is, let me talk about the motivations for it. Um, it seems that there's some really close connection between wisdom and foolishness. Wise people are one thing, fools are another. They're like totally separate groups. And moreover, the wisdom is what you get in virtue of which you're not a fool. And foolishness is somehow, somehow what it is to be foolish is to not be at all wise. So it looks like Foolishness is the absence of wisdom. If you think about that a little bit, um, and you think about what foolish is, foolishness is, that gives you some suggestions about what wisdom might be. So what, what's foolishness? Um, well, at a first pass, to be foolish is to not have any practical knowledge about what to do. Um, the fool thinks it's a good idea to, uh, the, you know, the foolish 18-year-old kid thinks it's a good idea to walk up to the waitress and ask her out on a date right there in the restaurant. It's because he, um, he doesn't know what he should and shouldn't do. He doesn't have the right sorts of practical knowledge. Um, well, if foolishness is sort of lacking the right sorts of practical knowledge, and that's the opposite of wisdom, that kind of suggests that wisdom is a certain kind of practical knowledge. Um, so let's just make that into another theory. We might think wisdom is some kind of um, some kind of practical knowledge, because that's what fools lack. Um, there are a bunch of contemporary people who have this idea that wisdom is some kind of practical knowledge, and the different among these people, the different ones develop that idea in different ways. Um, one of those ways of developing this idea is due to this person, Sharon Ryan, this um, contemporary philosopher. She has a version of this, and her version says um, the following. Sharon Ryan's version of this says, to, uh, to be wise is to... Um, she says that to be wise is to know how to live well. Um, and, um, and also value or desire living well. So that's sort of a version of the idea that wisdom is a sort of practical knowledge. Um, uh, in, in, to her mind, it's the practical knowledge consisting of knowing how to live well. To be wise is to know how to live well. Maybe the fool doesn't do that. And she thinks there's more to this stuff about valuing and desiring living well. We can forget about that for, for now. Um, she thinks the central thing about wisdom is knowing how to live well. So that's a second, um, a second view. And I actually don't like that either. Um, so let me quickly talk about why I don't like that. And well, that's going to lead into the argument that there are two kinds of wisdom. The criticism of that will lead into that argument. Um, Forget about um, Sharon Wright's particular version of the view. Let's just look at the more general thing um, and try to come up with criticisms of it. Um, I, have, I have a criticism of it, uh, partly due to discussions I've had with a colleague named Ned Marcosian, and partly due to thinking about this myself. I've decided that wisdom can't just be uh, any kind of practical knowledge. And here's why I think that. Um, 
Just imagine that there are two people, just any two people, call them person A and person B. Um, and suppose that they have um, equal amounts of practical knowledge. Or if you think there's a certain kind of practical knowledge, like knowing how to live well, that makes for wisdom. Suppose they have equal amounts of knowledge of how to live well. So just suppose that two people just have, just have equal practical knowledge, or equal amounts of the practical knowledge relevant to wisdom. Just suppose they're like that. Um, and then suppose one of them um, starts studying physics, and studies a lot of it, and learns as much physics as Stephen Hawking knows. Um, and really has lots of deep physics knowledge, um, while at the same time having the same amount of knowledge of how to live well. So suppose that happens. Suppose that person A, while retaining the same practical knowledge as person B, gets a whole bunch more deep theoretical knowledge. Now ask yourself, uh, after getting that extra knowledge, is person A wiser? Have they gained any wisdom in gaining all this deep knowledge? And I would want to say, yeah, there's wisdom to be had in, in purely theoretical knowledge, if you have, at least if you have the right source of it and a lot of it. But that means that wisdom isn't just practical knowledge, because that means that you can increase your wisdom without increasing your practical knowledge. So wisdom isn't just practical knowledge, it's something else. If it were just practical knowledge, you couldn't get more of it without getting more of practical knowledge, which, which person A does. So I don't think wisdom is just some kind of practical knowledge. So those are the theories I was going to talk about. And the criticism of this practical theory of wisdom leads into this argument, maybe we could discuss, this argument that wisdom actually comes in two varieties. Um, as a little background, I should tell you that um, the idea that there are two kinds of wisdom has ancient roots. This character, Aristotle, thought there were two kinds of wisdom, and lots of his followers in medieval times agreed with him on that, and even some contemporary people think that too. So there's a sort of... Um, pedigree for the idea that wisdom comes in two varieties, and the fact that that pedigree exists might suggest that maybe there's something to the idea. I think there's a better suggestion as well, uh, a better reason merely than the pedigree for thinking that there are two kinds of wisdom, and well that reason comes out of thinking a little more about that case of the people A and B, thinking a little bit more about what happens when somebody gets a bunch more theoretical knowledge and therefore is wiser than the other. So let's think about that a little more, and then we'll be done with the discussion or the talk part. Um, so, you know, they have equal amounts of practical knowledge. Somebody gets a whole bunch of deep theoretical knowledge. Is that person thereby wiser? Yeah, it seems plausibly they are. Now, about that very same scenario, I want us to ask a different question. Let's not ask the question, is A wiser than B at the end of the story? Let's ask the question, is A more foolish than B at the end of the story? So they have equal amounts of practical knowledge. A learns a bunch of physics. Question, is A more foolish than B? Is B more foolish than A? Uh, do they have equal amounts of foolishness? It doesn't seem plausible to say that B is more foolish than A, just after A got more theoretical knowledge. I mean, they each have equal knowledge of how to live well. They each pretty much behave themselves in the same ways. Um, none of them do, neither of them do foolish things particularly. So it doesn't seem right to say that person B is more foolish than person A, after A just got a bunch more theoretical knowledge. This is a problem for what we said a minute ago. Because foolishness is the absence of wisdom. And we want to say B is no more foolish than A. So since we say B is no more foolish than A, that amounts to saying B doesn't have any more of an absence of wisdom than A. There's no more a lack, B lacks wisdom no more than A does. But that means A is not wiser than B. So when we ask about foolishness, we want to say A is not wiser than B. Not wiser than B because B doesn't have any more of a lack of wisdom than A, because B doesn't have any more foolishness than A. Now for the very same case of these two people, when we asked about wisdom, we wanted to say A is wiser than B. When we asked about foolishness, we wanted to say A is not wiser than B. So it looks like we're committed to these contradictory views. We have something like a puzzle. Um, common sense or um, just intuitive thinking about things leads us to hold contradictory beliefs, both that A is wiser than B and that A is not wiser than B. So which one should we believe? That he is wiser or that he's not? 
Well, I think that's a question um, we don't really have to take a side on, because I think that there's two kinds of wisdom, theoretical wisdom and practical wisdom. And theoretical wisdom is what A has more of, but practical wisdom, A doesn't have any more of that. So somehow, talk about wisdom, the term wisdom, somehow that talk gets us to think of the theoretical kind, and somehow, foolish talk, foolishness, talk of the word foolishness, gets us to think about the practical kind. And so when we want to say A is wiser than B, on the one hand, what we really mean is A is theoretically wiser than B. And when we want to say A is not wiser than B, on the other hand, what we really want to say is A is not practically wiser than B. So really, when we notice that there are two kinds of wisdom, we can dissolve this little puzzle we just found for ourselves. We were thinking that we hold these contradictory beliefs about wisdom. What are we supposed to do? But then when we thought some more, we realized the beliefs aren't contradictory. They're about different kinds of wisdom. And in fact, um, in fact, since the view that there are two kinds of wisdom resolves the puzzle I set up, we have some reason to believe that view. The reason goes like this. There's, there's this puzzle about the case of A and B. We want to say contradictory things. How do we resolve that puzzle? If we had a theory that resolved that puzzle, well, this resolution would give us some reason to believe the theory. Well, the theory that there are two kinds of wisdom does resolve that puzzle. And in resolving that puzzle, um, we see that the theory has, has some reason behind it. So that's how I want to think about wisdom. I want to think wisdom comes in two varieties, the theoretical and the practical. I have a bit more to say about what those varieties are, but um, rather than get into details, I just wanted to introduce you to the issue and raise a puzzle and talk about an argument that resolved it. So that's what I did. And now, we can just have a discussion about that.